I think it's really important in league to like balance the amount of time you play and you don't play. Um, for example, before I would just spam games non-stop, like after scrims, literally just play league. But I think that's a pretty bad way to go about it because it's not as productive and you get burned out easily if the only thing that's on your mind is League of Legends. So I think it's really important to like balance your life in that sense. So like what I tried to do is after scrims, I'll take like a small break, wait for food, maybe play some other game for like an hour or two and then like go back to solo queue. Just try to not like have my entire life be revolved around League of Legends because I think if you just only play League of Legends as a professional player, you will get burned out because if you just only eat, breathe, and play League of Legends, then it just it just gets really repetitive. So I think it's really important that you kind of find your balance and like try to do other things um, while playing League of Legends. I think the way the game works right now is you just play as smart as possible basically with the least amount of risks, uh, at least during laning phase. So it can be pretty hard to stand out if you don't play around a certain lane, for example, like if you play mid lane and enemy support is roaming or the enemy have river control, then you basically just have to sit back and farm. So I think it kind of like depends a lot on your vision and how aggressive you're willing to play because I think mid lane is kind of versatile in the way you can play a lot but the most important factor is that you have vision and control to play the way you want to play. I think it was just um, the way we created leads and won games in the past was with me playing like a playmaking champion and then just basically forcing something to happen or create an advantage and then snowball it through that. But like when I'm on champions that can't really force plays or create advantage, the game becomes much slower and much more stale. And I think the reason for that was that we were playing really poorly around objectives and not really forcing fights as much as we should have. Um, so we had like long team talks about like our problems and how to solve them, what we should do differently moving forward. And I think we came to a pretty good conclusion regarding that. So I think um, we had a pretty good week this time around. And I think moving forward, we'll have a lot better results because we kind of figured out how to play together as a team more. Who's ready for some very good mid today? Yeah, we got flash ult, you die. What? We got flash ult, you die. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> See you at the mid lane. <laughs> See you in my lane kingdom. I think Adrian and Eltec are really good players, and I know they play a lot together as well, and are pretty good friends, and they have really good uh, synergy together, and I think it showed the series as well, and just um, Dick's results in general, they have been performing really well and have made Dig a lot better team in my opinion. I'd say they're probably like potentially a top four, but definitely in the upper tier of the teams right now with Dig and I mean with Adrian and Altec coming in. So I think Dig is a much better team now. Excited is Cloud9. We have Impact starting once again in the top lane. Contracts in the jungle. Jensen in mid, sneaky and smoothie in the bottom lane once again with Kotri. I'd say the games today went pretty well. Uh, first game I think it was a bit awkward because of the way we drafted, we hadn't really had much practice with it. And I think Taldia with a tank is usually pretty awkward because it's really hard to force plays on the top side of the map. And then we just made a lot of small mistakes. We got snowballed on, but I think game two, we just, um, I think we had leads on all lane. All lanes, top snowballed through a lot of ganks, had a lot of pressure mid. Um, I don't remember what happened in bot lane um, the situation, but I think we just had a lot of leads and we kind of, Snowball it. We had the Zack pick. They didn't ban Zack. They gave us Zack, which was pretty surprising. Zack is pretty OP, so it was just a really easy to play game. And then we just played the macro fine, and we won it pretty solidly. Yeah, I think game three we just had really good macro, um, played really well together, and just snowballed into lead. Um, I think we played pretty well around the Talia pick with the walls and stuff like that. So. I think it was a pretty clean uh, game for the most parts. I'm look, I'm look. Yeah, uh, just pressure side, pressure side, pressure side, pressure yeah, side. Yeah, I'm okay. Here. Slow, slow, slow. No, it's okay. Yeah, I'm taking, I'm taking. I, I, son. I'm gonna cash it back. I'm gonna cash it back. Here, here, here. They're multi here, multi here. We're fine. I'm look. Kill cast, kill cast, kill cast, cast. I'm look. I'm able to cash it back. Here, here, here. Cash it, cash it. I'm look. Just shit. Shit press. We can end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can end the bar. No flash, no flash. We can end. Yeah, yeah. Can't do anything. Hot shot. Son him. Wow. KDA players. 
I need to reach my DPM. Kill this guy. Kill. I'm him. Oh, no, man. Bounce <laughs> back in the series and the week with a 2-0. This one over Team Dignitas with the reverse sweep. Jensen goes unkilled in the finale. Sneaky. I think we have learned a lot to split about the way we should be playing the game, and I think we've improved a lot. So I think playoffs is coming up soon, and I think we've made a lot of improvements. So going into playoffs, I'm actually feeling pretty good about our team right now.